Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is for every new iPad user on the market. As you guys know, I've recently switched over my entire workflow to working purely and purely from an M2 iPad Pro. While working from an iPad is absolutely amazing, I do believe there's a learning curve to this entire process and you need to build a workflow for yourself so that you can actually replace your laptop completely and just start working completely off of an iPad. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through some basics that you need to know once you pick up an iPad. This video, I'm using the M2 iPad Pro and the M1 iPad Air and this will pretty much work for any iPad user on the market. Market, considering most of the iPads work on iPad OS 16. I hope you're excited. Let's do this. Let's do a quick rundown on all the physical aspects of the iPad. We have the M2 iPad Pro on the left and the M1 iPad Air on the right. As you guys can see, they are very, very similar devices. On the iPad Air, you have one camera at the back, whereas on the M2 iPad Pro, you have two cameras. These devices are basically aluminium and glass. They're really, really nice. The iPad Pro has a face ID sensor as well as the front facing camera put together, which is what you're seeing on the left. Whereas the iPad Air has a touch ID sensor, which is also integrated into the power button, which I think is really cool. I like touch ID a lot. You have Apple Pencil support for both these iPads. Both of them are compatible with the Apple Pencil 2. Each iPad comes with a USB-C port at the bottom. Both these iPads are pretty well built. Now the iPad Pros have been known to bend so you definitely want to get a case for them. I've never really bent an iPad Pro till today but it is what it is. The back of the iPads, both of them, you'll see a smart connector which helps you connect to the Magic Keyboard. Of course for the M1 iPad Air, you're going to have to use the smaller keyboard whereas the M2 iPad Pros come in two sizes so you can choose a keyboard of your liking. Next, we're going to be looking at how you power on and power off your iPad. In order to do this, you're going to want to press two buttons. One is the main power button or the lock screen button that you use every now and then. And the next is the volume up button. You want to hold down both these buttons together until you see the screen that you can see on my screen right now. Yeah, it also ends up taking screenshots sometimes, so be careful when you do that. Swipe on your screen in order to get the iPad to go off. Now, powering on is super easy. You don't need to press two buttons. Just hold down the lock button or the main power button and your iPad is going to start booting. You're going to see the the Apple logo, it's going to take a couple of seconds and then your iPad is going to be powered on. It's pretty simple and this is something that a lot of people don't know how to switch off their iPads because you'll end up pressing the power button and it pretty much just locks your screen. So yeah, this is the first tip that you really really need to know about. When you unlock your iPad for the first time, what you're going to see is this page. This is known as your home page. Whenever you want to do any kind of work on your iPad, this is where you start from. Swiping right from here will take you to your next page of apps and swiping left from here will take you to your widgets which are also customizable. The home page is pretty much as the name suggests, your home screen. This is what you want to keep in mind at all times and this is the main space where you're going to get any work done. A major part of your home screen on any Apple device is the dock that you have at the bottom of your screen. This dock pretty much stays in place and has all the apps in place at all times. Swiping right on your home screen is going to take you to your second page of apps. But what you notice is that your dock hasn't changed. The dock is permanent and pretty much stays there with the apps in the same configuration. A pro tip that I use is pretty much keeping all my most used apps in the dock so that I have access to them no matter what page or what stage of the iPad I'm at at all times. So I basically keep all my video editing apps, my most used app, my app store, my photo editing apps, my file management, all my major apps are always kept at the bottom of my screen in the dock. The next thing I'm going to look at is navigating and moving around between your iPad, between all the apps that you have installed on it and basic gestures on how to get control of anything that you want to do. As you can see, swiping left and right changes pages. I'm going to go and launch an app, for example, the App Store. As you see, the App Store pretty much takes up the entire screen and I'm just going to wait for it to load. Here we are, we're completely loaded up onto the App Store. Now, what you can do next is you want to look down at this little line. This little line at the bottom of your screen is the control bar. Pulling up on this control strip gives you access to different apps that are in your dock. Basically, you can switch between apps by just pulling it up, getting your dock in front of you, tapping on the app and switching between the apps at any given point in time. It's really, really handy. And this is why I said keep your most used apps in the dock at all times. If you long swipe on the control bar, you're going to see all the apps that are running in the background. Essentially, every time you swipe up, you're not closing an app. You're just minimizing the app and getting out of it, going back to your home screen. If you want to get out of an app, all you want to do is long swipe and swipe really, really fast on the control bar at the bottom of your screen. And you're going to go back to your home screen as you can see right now. As mentioned earlier, when you actually swipe out of an app, you're not getting out of the app completely, you're just minimizing it. The apps will remain running in the background. Once you're on your home screen, if you long swipe up on the touch bar, you're going to see the, all the apps that are running in the background. The iPads have a ton of RAM now, as well as the RAM management is really, really good on most of these devices. So they can hold a bunch of apps running in the background at any given point in time. Once you swipe up onto the home screen, which is holding up like I have right now, you can close each app individually. As you guys can see, I'm currently opening up the YouTube app. This is the only app that's actually open on my iPad right now. I'm going to get out of this by just 
swiping up this app's going to remain minimized it's not going to be fully closed now i can now long swipe on the screen when i long swipe the app shows up over there in order to close it all i got to do is swipe up in that mode and the app's going to close permanently Let's quickly run into a menu that you're going to want to use majority of the time on any Apple device. This is your settings menu. Settings I keep down in the dock because it's pretty handy, very very useful. And knowing what's inside this menu is really important. Right on the top, you're going to be greeted with your Apple ID. You can see my name on the top. In the right hand side, when you click on this, you're going to see your name, your phone numbers, password and security, payments and shipping, subscriptions, iCloud information, media and purchases, and all the different devices that you have within your Apple ecosystem. Of course, you have airplane mode, which is, as the name suggests, what it is. Wi-Fi. Bluetooth and VPN settings, they all are available here. You can pretty much control this even in the control center. Notifications, I keep majority of them off on my iPad. Sounds, if you want to control your sound settings. Focus modes, which I'm going to break down in another video for you guys. Screen time, which gives you the information about all the apps that are running, how much screen time you have on your device. It's really useful if you're trying to get into digital minimalism, which is kind of important. It's something that I've been looking at for the last few years. Of course, the general settings are the most important because when you go in there, you get all the information in the about menu regarding your device. You also get in information regarding your software updates over here and you can also trigger a software update on your iPad over here. It's really important to keep up with the latest operating system software updates pumped out by Apple because that's one of the main reasons to get an Apple device. The kind of software support that you get on these devices is crazy. The current software at the time of recording this is iOS, iPad OS 16.2. You can also get to know your iPad storage over here and uh, that's something I do check a lot. As you guys can see, I have the one terabyte variant of the iPad Pro M2, which is my main computer as a matter of fact. Date and time settings, keyboard settings and gestures, all of that is available here. While jumping into your settings is a really nice way so that you can go ahead and control your iPad as well as customize your iPad, one of the main features on any Apple device, doesn't matter which model you have, whether it's the M2, iPad Pro, M1, iPad Air, iPhone or even your Mac, is the control center. The control center is on the top right hand side of your screen, you've got to swipe down from there. Over here you're going to see a bunch of settings clustered together. Long pressing on them is going to open up a few more settings which basically breaks down a more in-depth control use, which is really cool. For example, if you long press on Bluetooth, you can see your connected devices. Long press on airdrop you can see your airdrop settings over here you can see your settings regarding your playback screen setting that i'm currently tapping on this will help your screen rotation get locked you can choose your orientation how you like screen mirroring focus modes can be adjusted from here as well which is something like i said is really in depth and i'm gonna have to make a separate video on that in the near future you can control your display settings over here which is basically controlling your night shift setting up custom time modes going into your settings turning on and off true tone and light mode or dark mode whichever you like i normally keep my ipads on dark mode uh, the iPad Air is on light mode right now. True tone display has to be switched off if you want to be editing your videos or photos and if you want color accuracy because true tone display can affect that in a particular way and I don't normally keep that on. Uh, you also have a bunch of different settings like opening up your camera and controlling your home. <laughs> Yeah, this is where you can control majority of your iPad. Now, as you guys can see, the number of settings within the control center is pretty limited. You can add more settings and you can customize your control center. In order to do this, you want to go into your settings menu, scroll all the way to control center. Once you're in control center, you're going to see the apps that are already included in your controls and you're going to see more controls at the bottom of the screen. You can come down here and add as many other controls as you want from this and you're going to see them show up in your control center. A couple of them are my alarm clock. I definitely keep my dark mode and light mode toggle over there, my keyboard brightness which is really important because I use the magic keyboard, notes, screen recording, quick notes, sound recognition, Shazam, I love all of these, music and voice memos. I normally keep all of these settings in my control center giving me ease of access to get into these apps or get into these features on the iPad whenever I want them. It's pretty cool, try it out, get into the control center and customize it so that you can get more use out of your iPad on the go. One of the most common questions is how do you move apps from the app library which is on the bottom right hand side and customize your home screen as well as various pages within your iPad. Pretty simple, you want to go into something known as jiggle mode. When you long press on any app on your home screen, you're going to get a couple of options. All you got to do is click on the first one which is edit home screen. You're going to see all your apps are now jiggling which basically means you can move them around. Swipe to another page and pull an app with you and you can pretty much paste it on that page. Hold the app, swipe back to the original page and you can bring the iPad app back to your home screen page as well. Oh yeah, that is just a little thing 
thing that I was doing right now so it's asking me if I want to activate FaceTime don't worry about that like I was saying just swipe and put it back to the original page and you're good to go as you can see I can move any app around also when you click on the little icon on the top left hand side of your app the little minus sign you're going to get a few more options such as delete app remove from home screen or cancel this is going to help you remove an app from your home screen or delete it completely from the iPad at any given point in time it's really really simple to move apps around and also another thing that you need to know about is if you long press on a particular app you're going to get a bunch of different shortcuts from within that app that you can actually use one of those shortcuts is to remove the app from the home screen or to delete it completely so this is how you move about apps this is how you can set up your home screen and this is how you can basically set up your pages with different apps on it at any time on any iPad Now another thing you might want to do is search for an app within your iPad. You can pretty much go into your app library and look for any app that you want. You can also just go through the pages, but there might be a point where you don't want to do any of that. You just want to get the app instant. What you can do is you can use something known as Spotlight Search, which is also available on a Mac as well as an iPhone. All you got to do is swipe down on your home screen. That's it's as simple as that. When you swipe down, you're going to get this search tab. You can tap for anything that you're looking for and it's going to look for your document or the app that you're looking for within your iPad storage. What's even better better about spotlight search is the fact that when you do this when you swipe down on your screen and go into the search tab you can also pull up documents from your iPad as well as look at the websites and get information off of the web directly over here within this search menu it's really handy it's something that i use a lot of the times i also look for information off of wikipedia from right here so it's really really cool it's like having google search on the go so definitely try this out spotlight search is definitely going to make your workflow a lot faster a lot easier and a lot smoother Also finally in your dock on the bottom right hand side corner you're going to find this little icon which has a bunch of apps in it this is your app library this is essentially been released by apple about 2 years ago this is the one place where every app on your ipad actually rests now you can have your apps on your ipad on your home screen you can have them divided into pages but the app library is just a standalone feature that apple built where they segregate and sort every app on your ipad making it easy for you to find for example there are folders such as utilities social creativity entertainment recently added your apps are automatically sorted once you download them to your device and Apple keeps it like that for you. So in case you want to keep a really clean and minimal home screen, you can remove the app or any particular app from your home screen but don't worry, it's not going to disappear. It's going to remain sorted for you within the app library so you can go back and find. There are a lot of people who I know who don't like keeping any apps on their home screen and this is essentially really really useful for any of them. You can also take an app from the app library, drag it back to your home screen and have it like you had before. So gives you a ton of flexibility. It's not as good as Android but it's pretty neat in its own way. Also in case you've noticed the slightly dark theme on my iPad I like my device is slightly dark it's just something that's a personal preference and I think the dark mode on the iPad is absolutely amazing it's just an ordinary mention in this video it's not something groundbreaking but I normally keep it here in my control center where I can basically toggle from light mode to dark mode at any given point in time I prefer dark mode and I leave my iPad like that and if you want to get the best battery life out of your iPad I would suggest you do this too because dark mode just keeps everything dimmer and doesn't blow out your screen so gives you better battery life Now we've spoken so much about apps but you're going to be wondering how you download apps to your device. It really doesn't matter which device you have. It's pretty much the same across the board whether you have an iPad, an iPhone or a Mac, even an Apple Watch as a matter of fact. You're going to pretty much want to go to this little blue icon that you have on your screen. The blue icon I'm talking about is the App Store icon. You have it by default on every Apple device. All you got to do is tap into it. Once you tap into it, you're going to be taken to your Apple App Store. It gives you something known as the Today View, which is what you're introduced with. After that, you have Games View, which gives you all the games on the App Store, the App View, the Apple Arc Key view which is Apple's own gaming service as well as a final search tab at the bottom of your screen. You can go in here and look for any app that you already know that you want to download. You can type into the search bar and you're pretty much good to go. We have something known as the top apps of this week which is pretty much something that Apple curates for you. You can go into this little folder and you can see all the apps that your friends and people around you are using or basically people in your area. You can also search for an app by just going to Spotlight Search, tap in the name of the app and it should redirect you to the App Store. You have the option even to get it as you can see on the top of your screen. Information about the app, you can go to the official website Spotlight Search is a great way to find any app that you actually want. If you want to download it, that's one way to do it. Other than that, you can go into your iPad, into the App Store, in the App Store, hit the search icon, type the name of the app, and once you're there, you're going to be directed to that app itself. Once you're in the app, you have to hit the Get button in order to get this app downloaded onto your device. You'll either have to put in your Apple ID password, or you'll be allowed to use your biometric settings. You can use Touch ID. If it's a newer iPad, you can pretty much use Face ID. In case you want to know how to update the apps on your 
iPad, iPhone or any Apple device. Inside the App Store, on the top right hand side corner, you're going to see an icon that looks like a human being. That's pretty much your Apple account. You can go into your Apple account, take a look at all the, all the apps that you've purchased, take a look at all the notifications that you have, add money to your Apple account as well, look at your subscriptions, manage your subscriptions from here, which is very, very handy. Also, below that, you can see upcoming automatic updates. All you got to do is pull down on this screen to refresh it and you're going to be able to see all the updates that are pending for all the apps within your iPad. Hit update all and boom, your app are going to get updated. I think you should do this once every week at least so that your iPad stays optimized, you don't have any bugs on your device and just keeps running as smoothly as you would want it to. Now, if you're somebody who works on an iPad, another part of your essential workflow is going to be the ability to take screenshots on this device. You can definitely use your Apple Pencil shortcut by just swiping from the bottom left hand side of the screen using your pencil. This screenshots the entire page, but, but that's not the only way you and you might not have an Apple Pencil. You want to keep note of two buttons, which is the volume down button as well as the power button on your iPad. This works on all iPads. All you want to do is snap these two buttons together and your iPad is going to take a screenshot and give you a preview on the screen itself. You have a bunch of options that you can use on this screen for sharing. The most important is if you're working on a web page you have two options you have screen as well as you have full page full page essentially lets you take a screenshot of the entire web page in front of you this is pretty awesome in my opinion because you might be somebody who's doing a bunch of research and you want to save the entire web page preview you want to mark up different aspects of the web page you can essentially save the entire page of course you can go back to the traditional screen as well and just screenshot whatever's on your screen at any given point in time that works too you have markup tools right here which you can use with the apple pencil or you can also use essentially a keyboard and markup you can also use your fingers and markup whatever works for you and in your workflow Overall, I think this is really, really useful. You can zoom in and zoom out on your screenshots. You can adjust the opacity of the screenshot as well. And you have the ability to share screenshots directly from here. Normally, what I do is I save to photos or save to files. I can also delete the screenshot directly from here, making this super handy and prevent any clutter in case I've accidentally taken a screenshot. Overall, this is really, really easy. Also, you need to know if you save to photos, you do have an album that's automatically created by Apple for you called Screenshots. So basically, all your screenshots are going to be right here. I think that's pretty cool itself. So yeah, keep that in mind. Pretty much it for today's tutorial. The iPad's so big, it could take me days, weeks and hours to break this baby down. But I've pretty much gone through all the essential basics that you guys need to know in today's video. So if you did enjoy it, do give it a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.